the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland. What is happening here? Well, we've had three different prime ministers in the space of two months, the economy is fucked, and the Conservative Party's polling numbers have been smashed more times than the Spanish announcers table. Oh my gosh, oh! How did this happen? Well, the story begins with Boris Johnson. Boris Johnson, seen here looking like an old mop with a walloper hanging off of it, found himself in trouble when he promoted a man called Chris Pincher to the role of Deputy Chief Whip. An unfortunate name given that Pincher had been accused multiple times of sexual misconduct and not only did Boris know about this before promoting him, but he had also joked about it, once making the now infamous comment, Pincher by name, Pincher by nature. And so goes the nature of the British press. Bragging about shaking hands with Covid patients at the beginning of the pandemic, delaying the lockdown for over a month and presiding over one of the highest Covid death rates in the world, trying to deport asylum seekers to f***ing Rwanda, big deal. Promoting a sex pest called Pincher, on the other hand, well, no journalist is letting that one go to waste. Boris was hit with a flurry of resignations from his own party a record-breaking 59 in the space of 48 hours, making this the biggest scandal in British politics since the resignation of Lord Titty Twister of Shrewsbury in 1886. So what happened next? Well, one moment. This video is sponsored by Atlas VPN. Are you trying to watch your government implode in a local cafe but you're worried about public Wi-Fi dangers? Well, you need Atlas VPN. A VPN is a virtual private network. Did you know that's what VPN stands for? I'll bet you didn't. That means it sends your internet traffic through an encrypted tunnel, it keeps your IP hidden, and it protects you from spying. On top of that, you're also protected from annoying pop-up ads, malware, and all other such scary internet things. You can browse the internet from just about any other country in the world. On platforms like Netflix, this means you can access geo-restricted content, allowing you to watch films and programs you normally wouldn't have access to at home. Do you have multiple devices? Laptops? Phones? A work PC? A gaming PC? Say no more, buddy. You can use your VPN on unlimited devices. And now, Atlas VPN are offering the best VPN deal in the market. The best. For their Black Friday deal, you can get three years of Atlas VPN Premium for only $1.70 a month, plus six months extra for free. $1.70. That's literally a steal, if the person you're stealing from gets $1.70 a month. So, stop with the cringe. Click the link in the description where you can access the deal now. Do it. Boris was then replaced by Liz Truss, a kind of free market Thatcher-esque figure only without a popular mandate for her ideas or the ability to sell any of her ideas. And what did she do? Well, she did something called a mini-budget, which turned out to be more of a mega-budge shit. Nailed it. Like most countries, Britain currently has a bit of an inflation problem and a fuel problem. And Liz Truss's answers to that problem were cutting income taxes on the highest earners, as well as increasing the threshold for stamp duty. Let's talk about why this is bad. If you have an inflation problem, this usually means you have too much currency chasing too few goods. The result is that the goods become more expensive and boom, inflation. Some of the things you might do to solve this would be to take some of these smackers out of the economy. You can do that by raising taxes, you can kill two birds with one stone and impose a windfall tax on energy companies who are currently making record profits, like our old friends in the EU all did. There are times when governments can invest more money in the economy, say if it boosts the production of consumer goods, thereby taking their prices down. However, what you don't do is borrow money to pay for tax breaks to the richest people in the country, sending even more money in to chase goods. And what you definitely shouldn't do is insist that those top earners will spend their new bonuses on investment and economic growth. Because that's not really how capital investment works. Truss's attempts to brand her opposition as the anti-growth coalition ultimately failed because her policies didn't stimulate any growth. Instead, the pound crashed harder than Princess Diana's car. Too soon? The free market fundamentalists of the IMF denounced the budget. The Bank of England, who weren't even told about the budget ahead of time, were forced to step in to buy government debt. And even the more well-off people in the country saw their mortgage rates go up. 
And if there's one thing you can't do to a Tory voter, it's fuck with their mortgage payments. Liz Truss resigned after being Prime Minister for only 45 days. Not only was she outlasted by this ball of lettuce, but also by every other Prime Minister in British history. Even George Canning, whose tenure was only cut short because he died of a stroke. She was also outlasted by Viscount Godric, aka Frederick John Robinson, 1st Earl of Ripon. Um, funny story about this guy. Uh, after he died, his body was used as a template for the leader of every conservative student debate society in the country. Or we also have His Grace William Cavendish, 4th Duke of Devonshire. So he was actually elected Prime Minister right in the middle of his Latin vocabulary exam which he failed and he only resigned because his mother forced him to. Maybe we'll look at one more of these guys, um, wait, what? Boner Law? Boner Law? Boner Law? At the time of writing, Liz Truss has still been unable to prove her whereabouts when the Queen died and this old clip of her has been an increasing cause for concern. We asked them their opinion of the monarchy. Do you know what they said? They said, abolish them. We've had enough. <laughs> but believe it or not, conference, they didn't say this once. We met another group of people and another group of people and all three groups of people said, abolish the monarchy. <laughs> Okay, so how are the Labour Party doing? Well, their polling numbers are making it look like most of the country has been annexed by a Russian army. At this rate, the Conservatives are going to need another Falklands invasion just to get back on their feet. But why? What are the Labour Party doing to achieve this lead? Well, the answer is basically nothing. The leader of the opposition, Sir Keith Danger Starmer, definitely doesn't want anyone thinking he's the same as Corbyn, but he doesn't want a lot of left-wing Labour voters to think he's nothing like Corbyn either. He made 10 fairly left-leaning pledges in his bid to become leader, kind of broke them all, removed several left-wing politicians from his shadow cabinet, but he has also put forward an energy policy which would make the UK the first major economy in the world with a zero emission power system by 2030 in a proposal which is arguably further left wing than anything suggested by his predecessor. Can we trust him to do this? I don't know. I'm not going to pretend to know what's happening in this brick shaped head of his. Unfortunately, the only way to find that out is through a general election which hopefully comes sooner rather than later. But of course, there is always the alternative scenario, which might go like this. First, Conservative voters will wake up from this long Covid fever dream and remember that the new Prime Minister, Rishi Sunak, is in fact a brown person. In their fury, they will flee to the last refuges of truly British society, Gibraltar and the Falklands, Rishi will be forced to resign, by now, everyone will have forgotten about the Pincher saga and Boris will gleefully wobble up on stage at the next party conference saying something like Oh, by jingo, what a hullabaloo! I leave this lot alone for, for five minutes and, and look what happens! And everyone claps, the country loves it, and the Conservatives win every seat in the country. Personally, I currently have £800 on my fellow countryman Count Duckula being the new Justice Minister, but that's just my guess, and please don't take that as gambling advice. Um, register to vote. Bye.